All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. So we're doing some E-Track in the trailer. Uh, I've done a few videos on this trailer in the past, and I've had some requests of so people ask me how I installed the E-Track. Well, I'm putting in some additional E-Track, and I want to show you the process I'm using. It's not very hard. Really, we're just screwing it to the metal studs in the floor, but uh, I'm doing this piece right along this edge right here. The reason I'm doing this is I need to have a closer tie-down point to the wall that will keep the bike more secure and closer to the wall. So let's get started here. All right, what we're doing here is you want to find out where your stud spacing is. On this particular trailer, it's every 24 inches. I've got a metal cross member that that's where I'm going to screw. I'm going to use these metal 2-inch self-tapping metal-to-metal screws. Now, I'm just holding dirt bikes in here. If you're holding something stronger, let's say a Razor, or four-wheeler, or something heavy, or a car even, you're going to want to use a bolt with a nut, washer and nut underneath as you go through. So I don't, I don't need that kind of strength. I'm really am just going to use this. So if you needed to go, like I said, if you need something heavier, you'll want to screw, you want to screw through, and then you'll want to uh, use a, a bolt and a nut. We're just going to use these self-tapping screws. And right here on this side, I'm, I'm starting here, and I, there's actually a metal plate all the way for about six inches right underneath the floor here that this D-ring is hooked into. So I've got, I can put, I can put three, probably three screws in right here and this will be pretty a pretty secure area. You'll want to space, this is five, I have a five footer, a four foot, and a four foot. Ideally you want to get as long as piece as possible. You don't want to have all these little smaller sections kind of sectioned up. But you can do it, you just want to make sure that each section has at least two studs that, that, that it's sitting on and then align the holes. You want to make sure you move the holes to where the, the, the cross members are so that way you don't have to drill new holes through the metal, which I might have to do on some of the other ones here. So let's get started here. So I'm going to use a pilot hole. Make sure you get a good drill bit. Yeah, the key to this, make sure you have a good sharp new drill bit. Uh, it can really dole these out. Don't just use the self, the self tapping will break on these, some of these screws. So you just want to do a pilot hole for these. And then we're just going to go down the line here and just drill all these out. Alright, I'll come back and do a couple more here because I have, until the next, until the next section here, this is, this is a big metal plate right under here. So it's helpful to go underneath your trailer, look and see where some of the studs are, see if there's any extra bracing places that you can screw into. If so, it makes it a lot easier to place your screws. All right, a lot of times you can tell where your stud spacing is too. Is a lot of the, a lot of times these panels, these wood panels on the floor, are going to have the joint right on top of a panel. There'll be like a you know there'll be like a bar sitting right here that these two panels are sitting on, and you can see there's screws right here. So I, there's a screw here and a screw here. So I'm going to be able to I'll, I'll be able to put my screws probably one on either side of this. One here you can drill down and see if you're going to hit. Curious to see if it hits here. Nope, that went all the way through the wood. Okay, so here I'm at a section. See, this is where the end of this five foot section ends, the four foot section begins. And I can see there's a screw right here. So I'm kind of like right on the, these are actually spaced too far apart to hit the metal stud. So I'm gonna have to drill a new hole here and a new one there. So that way both of these are going to be into the metal stud. So that's kind of a, even though I don't have a hole there on the E-Track, you can drill one out pretty easily. All right, then I'll also have to do the same thing on this other side as well. And I'm just going to keep working my way down. Let's get this, let's get this one screwed down. All right, so that's how we're, that's how we're doing a seam between the two. So we'll do two more there. And then we'll, uh, we'll have to do the same. This is only a four feet, four foot section. This one's only a four foot section here, so I'll have to do the same thing there. And then the last one should hit hit three of three of the studs there. So that's the key thing. You want to just make sure you get your stud spacing, figure that out, and then into the wood you can put some you know, some wood screws just in here along the way if you want. It's not going to provide a lot of support because, you know, this floor is um, screwed into the metal stud. So the metal, screwing into the metal is going to give the most support. 
Again, if you have heavier items, heavier uh, equipment you're putting in here, you know, put a, a nut, put a bolt with a nut and a washer underneath. And that's going to hold that. So I, I figure for the time being, I'll, uh, I'll leave it like this. If I need to modify that, I can. All right, guys, I'm under the tray where I want to give you an idea of what this cross member looks like. So if you can see here, this is an example of a self-tapping screw that I have in here. So there's like a beam that's folded over and it's kind of like a, an L-shaped beam. It has this flat edge. So if you need to put a nut onto a bolt, you can very easily. It's not inside of a tube, like a square tube or something like that. So it, they design it pretty well so that it, you have access to the back side of these screws so that if you need to secure them down a little better, you can. So I'm using my drill to just pre-drill all of the holes and I didn't have very good drill bits and in fact I even snapped off three. Three drill bits I lost or broke off in the process of doing this. Mainly because on the back side along the wall I had to go at an angle and there's that angle and the pressure and the heat on the drill bit really just kind of broke it off. So uh, get a really get, get some good drill bits and it'll really make this a lot, a lot easier process. This is where the D-ring is up in the top corner, and then it's got metal plating all the way down to there. So it's got a good section of support that I can drill into for my E-track. Now that I have all my pieces secured down to the floor, I am going to cut a piece here. Like I showed from underneath, I have a, there's a plate that runs all the way from the end of this D-ring all the way to here. So I can secure a small piece with you know four to six screws right into there. So that'll be secure. I want to finish off this wall piece here. I just got this measured and I cut out the trim piece and I'm just going to cut this. This cuts pretty easily with just a uh, angle grinder and a cutoff wheel. So I'm going to get that done and then I'll also probably put a piece, um, I don't think I'll have enough right now, but probably eventually put a piece f all the way to there to kind of match that line as well. All right, got our piece cut. Installing on the wall is a very similar process as the floor. I just want to find out where my studs are at. I can, you can tell because usually your screw holes, there's one here I'm not going to be able to hit, but I'm only going to be able to hit one, and I'll be able to hit this one here on the very edge. So I'm using a, just a one inch screw. You can use a one, one and a quarter, one and a half inch screw. You don't want to go longer than one and a half. You don't want to puncture through the skin of this trailer. Sometimes on these wall ones, I don't need a pre-drill because there's just an aluminum stud that I'm going through. Well, that's the process to put the e-track down and the walls and on the floor and if I ever have to update this and anchor down the e-track a little better with some nuts and bolts I'll I'll make an updated video but otherwise if you're not hauling real heavy equipment that's really not necessary but hopefully that was helpful informative if it was hit that thumbs up button subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next one thanks